Hi, fellow crafters. Are you ready for yet another video that shows you how to use up lots of your leftover paper scraps? Well, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful paper pattern element that you can use on the front of your cards that uses up lots of your leftover cardstock in a really fun way. Are you ready to learn how? Hey everyone, I'm Terry and I'm nuts about stamping. I love sharing project ideas and techniques with you each week for rubber stamping, scrapbooking, and paper crafting. Be sure to hit that red subscribe button and the bell beside it so that you're the first to be notified when my next video goes live. Now, let's get started on this really fun technique. Last week, I showed you how to use up leftover strips of cardstock to make this card. And I loved the color combination I used so much that I decided for this week's technique, I was going to use similar colors. So what you want to do is you want to gather up about seven different colors of cardstock that you think go together really well. And then you want to make sure that each one is at least four and a half inches long. You don't need to worry so much about the width, but you want each leftover piece to be about four and a half inches. Then what you want to do is bring in your paper cutter, open up the arm, and lay each leftover scrap down on your paper cutter so that you're going to cut one strip that is a quarter inch wide. Okay, so I'm going to do that for each of my colors. And then I'm going to show you what to do with each strip. So I'll go ahead and I'll continue cutting these strips and then we'll move on with the next step. There we go, here are my strips ready for the next step. Just so that you know, I chose Gorgeous Grape, Melon Mambo, Basic Black, Pacific Point, Pumpkin Pie, Bumblebee, and Coastal Cabana. I'm gonna set those aside for a second. The next thing you want to do is you want to bring in a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock and you want to use your adhesive sheets. So I cut this cardstock and then I cut my adhesive sheet using my paper cutter so that it would be exactly the same size. And what I'm going to do is peel off the backing, hopefully, and attach it to my Whisper White layer. Okay, we've got that. I'm going to bring in my silicone sheet so I don't get any kind of adhesive on my grid sheet. Then what you wanna do is you wanna peel off the backing of this and it creates kind of like a sticker sheet. Then what you're going to do, once again, is you're going to lay your strips across in whatever pattern or combination you like best and then we'll move on to the next step. I've attached all of my strips to the Whisper White layer. I'm going to bring my paper cutter back in and the first thing I want to do is trim off any overhang like so. And then what you want to do is you want to take this layer and you want to create two squares that are two inches. So we've already got the width of this is two inches. You now want to turn it and you want to line it up at the two inch mark and you're going to cut again. But instead of cutting up through the strip, what I would recommend is turn it over and work from the back on this. So you're going to cut this at two inches and this at two inches, okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to take each one of these squares and you're going to cut it in half. So you're going to create two triangles like so. And then I'm going to do the same here. And you line up the point in the, I guess the valley of the paper cutter and then you just run it up. Now, you can see I've got four triangles. I'm going to do the same thing. 
I'm going to take each triangle and I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to line up the point of the triangle in the valley of the cutter and then just lay my triangle across the top so that it's nice and flush against the top of the paper cutter. And then I'm going to create smaller triangles. So I will go ahead and I'll do that for each of the remaining triangles. And then I'll show you how to create this really cool element by putting these triangles back together in a unique way. I've got my triangles all ready here and I'm going to assemble them in a really fun way. So what you want to do is you want to find triangles that you can line up so that it creates this really fun, let's see, let's do this one. I guess it's kind of like a cross like so. So you're going to take these four pieces and you're going to line them up like that. Then you're going to use these leftover ones as additional elements. And then, so I'm going to line up so that they're on the opposite side of this center featured element, like so. Isn't that really fun? Now, what you want to do next is you want to bring in a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock and obviously your grid sheet. And what you want to do is using your multi-purpose liquid glue, you want to pick these pieces up and adhere them down onto this Whisper White square. Now, what I would recommend you do is start with the outside elements. Let me show you. So I'm going to take this one I'm gonna put some glue on the back. I'm not gonna put a lot of glue on the back of it, just enough so that it will stick it down, but it also will allow me some time to move it should I need to. So then you wanna take the opposite end, or the opposite side, I guess, and adhere that down, just leaving a smidge, there's a technical term, of Whisper White showing as a background. Okay, and I'm gonna put this one up here. I love multi-purpose liquid glue because then you can slide it and move it around before it dries fully. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna put liquid glue on the back of each one of these and I'm gonna then transfer these and put them inside and then I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all put together. So essentially, I'm going to glue each piece down exactly as I have it here on my grid sheet. Back in a moment. There we go. I have got this element ready to use on the front of my card. So while it dries, let's continue on and I'll show you how I'm going to finish my card. I decided to add a phrase on top of that colorful element by using the thank you phrase that's in the sweet ice cream stamp set. So I have a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock. I've got the phrase all ready to go. And I'm going to use Pacific Point for my phrase. That is one of the colors in my element for the front. So I want to color coordinate everything like so. And then I'm going to use my tailored tag punch and I'm going to punch out the phrase to use on the front of my card, like so. And then I think the next decision that has to be made is what do I want to use as the background for my card? So I could use Bumblebee, I could use Melon Mambo. Here's what Pacific Point looks like. Here's Coastal Cabana. Here is Pumpkin Pie. And here is Gorgeous Grape. 
Well, last week I used Gorgeous Grape. So this week, I think I'm going to try a different color for my background. Why don't you leave me a comment underneath this video and tell me which color you like best for the background element for this card. Well, my original intention was to use Pacific Point, but actually when I was asking you for what you thought would be a nice color for the background layer of this card, when I got to Bermuda Bay, I decided that I liked it better. So I stopped the video, I got a piece of Bermuda Bay and created a card base. And what I'm going to do now is add the element to the front of my card by using some Stampin' Dimensionals. So I'm just gonna put a Stampin' Dimensional in each corner on the back of this element. And then I'll peel off the tails of each Stampin' Dimensional. Here's a little tip. I've shared this tip before. If you have a hard time getting the layer off, peeling the layer off, use your thumbnail and really push in the center and it lifts up the edges so that you can easily add it or easily peel it off and use it. Okay, so I'm going to adhere this in the center of my card on the front and then I'm going to add my thank you. And I think what I'll do is I'll pop that up as well by using two Stampin' Dimensionals, one on each side and that will complete my card. Let's have a look. I love the tailored tag because it has these points so I can make sure that I line it up perfectly on top of my element. And I think that is a fabulous idea and a really fun and colorful element for the front of my card. Now let me show you a couple of other ideas. I have had so much fun playing around with this technique today that I actually made two other cards to show to you. So here's one here that uses the Thinking of You stamp from the Good Morning Magnolia stamp set. I think the stamp set is retiring. So if you like it, now's the time to pick it up before it's gone forever. So I stamped the image, punched it out. I used a strip of the ribbon just to add another element to the front of my card, mainly because I felt that this using all different kinds of blues and a little bit of the greeny blue seemed to be a very soft look on the front of this card. And I thought the ribbon might add just a little bit of zing to it. So this is a much more subtle look as opposed to this really bright look. And then I decided since on both of these samples, my card base was quite plain, which is fine, but I thought, well, what if I embossed the card base? So I used the, oh my gosh, I think it's called Dainty Diamonds embossing folder. And then I used sort of more fall colors. And then for the I'm Thinking of You, that comes from the Art Gallery stamp set. There it is there, I'm Thinking of You. And then in the matching dies, there is this die. So I stamped the phrase and then die cut it out. And again, I popped it up. So there we go. Three completely different looks, but each one uses the exact technique. I would also love, I think it would be fun if you would leave a comment below and tell me which one you like best. It's just, I'm just curious. It's a lot of fun when everybody gets to share their opinion. If you'd like a complete listing of the supplies that I use to make this card and the measurements for all of the layers, head on over to my blog, www.nutsaboutstamping.com. And if you want more tips and tricks and technique ideas for card making, I'll leave a link in the description box below so that you can subscribe to my free newsletters. I send two newsletters a week with a project idea in each one that you won't see anywhere else. I'm Terry. I am nuts about stamping. I hope you'll try this technique someday soon too. Bye for now.